Hi everyone, I'm back with another video in this series of videos looking around my craft studio. In this video, I'm going to look at this whole area at the back of my craft shed where I've got this big worktop and all my Alex drawers. I am going to go through every single drawer and show you exactly what I've got. So if you don't want that amount of detail, obviously this will be quite a long video, um, check my list of other videos because the first video I did was just a general overview and a look around the room. So if you're not interested in knowing what's in every drawer, you might prefer to watch that one. But for this video, we're gonna have a good look at what I've got at the back of the room. So I'll just move around and I'll start in this corner now, um, I've got this little cupboard sitting on my worktop here. This I bought in a secondhand shop quite a few years ago. It was black and I've just painted it cream. And it, it's quite nice storage for my buttons and beads and um, ribbons. Just, I just wanted something a bit colourful in the corner. And on top of that, I've got some of my finished journals and um, bits and bobs. I will show you this messy corner here because um, there's a bit of a gap between the end of the units and the wall. There is a small gap. So this is where I kind of shove things I don't want on view. I've got a sewing box there and some cleaning supplies. And um, these two clear uh, plastic boxes here are where I keep my white cards that I make my card blanks from and craft cards, because those are things I use pretty much on every card I make. So I, I like to have those handy. And the same goes for this box here, actually. These are leftover scraps and bits of pattern cards. I, I keep my scraps in here um, so that I reuse them rather than cutting into new sheets all the time. And then every now and then I have a bit of a declutter and recycle some of it so that it doesn't get over overloaded. And then this pile here, these are all card front sized bits of watercolour card, craft card. So, so they're ready to go. So moving along... Next is my paper trimmer. Now you'll see I've got two paper trimmers here. The Cuttle Caterpillar Pro is my everyday paper trimmer. I've had this, I'm thinking probably about five years. I bought it before they were actually available in the UK when they first came out. Um, and I paid a fortune to get it because of the shipping and everything and customs to get it from the States. But it was worth every penny because I haven't used any other trimmer for about five years and of course you don't need to replace the blades on this one so um, with the volume I, I make it, it, it's definitely been a good investment so it was worth every penny even with all the shipping etc. Um, I think you can get them in the UK now so they're, they're probably much more affordable. Next to that is my Stampin' Up paper trimmer. I don't use this as a paper trimmer, you can see I've actually taken the blade out. I use this as a scoreboard because um, I've got my Teflon bone folder here. I really like the grid on this. It's really easy for measuring. So when I want to score, I can just line up here and then I just use the groove that would be uh, for paper trimming uh, for scoring instead. And I find this works much better than a, than a scoreboard, really. So that's that. Moving on along the back. This is, um, I've got my wall light here, so this is quite a cosy sort of looking area. And in these boxes here, I've got my Sizzix cardstock. I've got my coloured cardstock here and then the neutrals here. The Sizzix card comes in A4 sheets and I keep here a supply of A5 sheets because obviously most of the time I'm die cutting um, I'm not using full A4 sheets, so it works better for me to have some cut down to, to A5 because obviously that's the size of the cutting pad. So um, unless I'm doing the larger projects, this is what I use most. So that's quite convenient. And then in here, I've got the colour swatches off the packaging for my opulent card, just so I can remember which what the colours are. And then I've got a mixture here of... Um, things that I've been using recently really. Um, I keep out sentiment strip type stamps because I use these a lot and every now and then I'll bulk make and stamp a whole load of them. So these are just on here. And then these actually, I just haven't really found anywhere better to put them because of the size. These are background stamps. I've got a few different ones, um, but they're too wide to go in my stamp storage. So for now they're sat on there, but I would quite like to find a better solution for those. 
Next along on the worktop, I've just got some pretty jars with buttons in. They're more for um, looking pretty than anything else, really. I don't use a lot of buttons in my work, but um, they do look pretty. Um, and this particular jar I bought in Spain in an antique shop and I love it. Then I've got another little unit. There's just some glass glitter in there and a few beads. Um, I could sort of incorporate those bits into my other storage, but again, it, it just looks pretty in that little um, little cupboard that I bought. I think I bought it at a car boot sale a few years ago. So finally on my worktop, I've got my wax burner. I always have a wax burner um, going on in here so that it smells nice. My radio, and then this is my marker storage. I've got a little Ikea unit that they, that it stands on and those little bowls, I keep bits and bobs in there. There's um, some die cuts that I, I bulk did a whole load, uh, some nice florals and just, oh, there's one empty, a few other bits and bobs there. And the marker storage itself, these are from Crafter's Companion. You can stack them on top of each other so you can custom make these to whatever sort of size you want them to there's two next to each other here so um obviously if you want them sort of lower and wider you can or you could stack them and make them really high but um this is just perfect for me at the moment i would quite like to get some more copic markers but that's what i've got so far i've got a few spaces left but when i get more of course i can just put some more layers onto those so um i've got plenty of scope Obviously, there's loads of room above that. It could go right up to the top if I needed it to. So not that I'd ever buy that many markers, but um, I like the fact it's expandable. So um, when I first started, I had all the pro markers and I didn't have any of, of these. So it, it's nice to have a system that can, can grow with your collection. Right. So that's the top of uh, the worktop. Let's have a look at all the drawers underneath now. So I'll start in this corner. I should probably explain first actually how I've set this up. So I've got um, nine Alex draw units in total. Seven of them are the draw units. And then I've got two, one at each end of these just cupboard types. My work top on just sits on the top. And all I've done is I've got some wooden blocks holding that up. And I've got uh, one in the middle and then one at the other end again. So that's all that's supporting that worktop. It's not actually fixed to the wall or anything because this is just a shed. Uh, the walls aren't that sturdy. So um, and obviously that worktop's heavy, so it's not going to go anywhere, especially with all that stuff on the top. Um, I, and I wanted to have a gap in between because, of course, this is valuable storage space that's not really that on show. So I'll show you what I've got along the top before we look at the drawers. So this end, I've got all my pencils in the very corner, tucked hidden behind there is my um, the hole punch for my Mambi planner. Then I've got my pencils. Those baskets are just full of Sizzix domes. I've got I've been using those a lot recently. And um, so I've just put them there so that I've got them to hand when I need them. Underneath the rest of this unit really is pretty much just plastic boxes filled with card. It's all cards I use a lot, craft card, etc. So um, it's just extra storage for card. Up the other end, let me just show you. Up this end, as well as some cards, I've got vellum, um, metallic cards. I've also got my magnetic sheets and um, my sort of basics for my stamp storage. I've got acetate, which I use to put my stamps on um, and my labelling supplies. So that's the underneath. Now let's have a look at the drawers. Actually, while I'm at this end, we might as well start from this side. So this first big cupboard houses, I've got uh, in the bottom, I've got a laminator my old uh, Zutter Binder All and my Glimmer, Spellbinders Glimmer foil system. I keep those in there. The top's just a bit of a mixture really of stationary items. I've got some string there, some bulldog clips. I've got some refills of the tape that I use for my labelling system. And for all my big styes that are stored, 
um, under my island unit, I keep the packaging in here because sometimes you do want to have a look at the, the pictures on the packaging. And then there's just some old notebooks and bits and bobs there. And you can see I've still got space really in here to add more things if I want to. Moving on to the first um, drawer unit. This one is kind of pretty much paints and uh, mixed media type things. So the top drawer is all of my gilding polishes from Creative Expressions. I've got quite a few of these. I was on their design team for a while. So um, at that point, I accumulated quite a lot. Also from them, I've got some pixie powders, which I keep in this little tub here. And then at the front are all my waxes. So this is all sort of gilding polishes and waxes in this drawer. Next drawer is alcohol inks and all the supplies that I need for those. I've also got all of my collection of Ecoline inks in here. I don't use those very much. Um, when I first started crafting, I bought those and they were kind of a bit all the rage at that point. But um, I don't use them as often as I probably should. So that's all alcohol inks, Ecoline. And then this tub here is ink refills for all my ink pads i don't buy ink, uh, refills for all of them just the colors that i use a lot and i know i'm going to need to re-ink so that's that draw next one this is all watercolors i've got some cass art um, watercolors in tubes there and in that palette are those so i keep that just on top and i can just um, reactivate it with water then i've got my ganzai tambi tambi at the bottom i've got some studio light some prima the alter new then i've got a custom um palette there of just various winsor and newton ones where i've just bought individual colors and then at the back i've got some more palettes and in here all sort of shimmery I've got a creative expression set and then I've got all of those twinkling H2Os, which again were all the rage a few years ago. So that's all watercolours. This is all pastes and sort of my tools for, for using them. I've got a selection here of different things. This is mostly palette knives. I've got some sponge and then these are a variety of different brands got some nice prima ones i've got some tonic at the back there are some different iridescent mediums a different different pastes you know some of them have got sand in etc different different types and then at the bottom is different mediums i've got sort of gessos and um various different um acrylic pastes and things like that my collage medium uh, gel, crackle gel, all those kind of things, um, all in that drawer. So that's the first drawer unit. We've only got another seven to go. <laughs> um, and on the top of this one, this is all metal embellishments. I've got them all in, in different tubs in here so that I can easily find what I want. All my Tim Holtz bits are in, in this particular one. Then I've got sort of book binding things, bottle tops, different findings, all that kind of stuff. This one is a bit of a mixture. I've got all my mica powders, again, selection of different brands. I've got different gilding flakes. And then at the back there, I've got some acrylic paints. Um, I think I did a show with these quite a few years ago, which is why I've got all of these. But they're really nice colours, kind of chalk type paints. And then I've got a few of the Prima liquid acrylics, so they live in there. This one is sprays. I've got um, various different, different sprays in here. Again, different brands. Some of these are years old. Um, then I've got some I mixed myself. These are um, I get bottles from my local craft shop, Amelia's, and, um, you know, I could just custom make using some of those liquid acrylic paints and, and some mica powders to, to get colours I want. Then I've got spare sprays, etc. in the back there. Then the bottom two drawers here are sort of ribbons and 
and that kind of thing. This one, I've got some notebooks at the back because I've got all the elastics in here that I use for my Eileen Hole journals. So it makes sense to keep the notebooks here as well that, that I tend to use with these. This is full of sort of burlap and that sort of natural twines and things like that. And then the very bottom drawer is other types of ribbons. Um, some of these are quite old. I don't tend to use ribbons an awful lot. This one I do use though, this is plain seam binding. I do use that quite a lot because I can custom colour it to go with whatever I'm doing. So moving on, the next one. Now the top drawer of the next few are where I keep the embossing powders I use a lot. So this particular one, I've got silver, copper, platinum and rose gold. And I'll, I'll, do, I'll keep following that I just do one one drawer unit at a time so we'll look at the next one when we get there this particular drawer is full of um that kind of funny foam i i use this um sometimes if i'm want to instead of using foam tape for a large area i'll cut this instead so that lives there this is all embellishments i bought these in the range these little boxes i think they're by i think they're by bram it doesn't say on them does it um, these are really useful for um, sequins and things like that. So I've got all my sequins and droplets and that kind of thing in here. And yeah, these are all sequins. So I've got one, two, three, four, six. I've got eight of those in here. And then at the back, I've got this little uh, tray, which is useful to use with them. Next along, this is all chipboard type things. I've tried to organise it a little bit. So I've got all my scrap and yak in one box. And then I've sort of categorised them. This one's a bit of a mixture, but then I've got one that's um, one that's just got circles in. This one's all kind of alphabets and numbers and basic shapes. So they're sort of organised into themes. Um, does make them a bit easier to find when I need them and this bottom drawer is crepe papers tissue papers that kind of thing and um, I think I've probably got some foam here I think this is foam for making flowers with right next one sorry this is a long video but uh, I, I, if you're like me you do like having a, having a nose around drawers so so again, this one has got embossing powders in the top. These are all colours I use a lot, so it was worth putting into these bigger drawers, you know, bigger tubs. So I've got brass here and pale gold. And then I've got plain white glitter and then glamour dust because those are the two sort of glittery things I use most. Next, this drawer is all glitters. Selection here again, I've got stickles, glitter glues, and then I've got some loose glitters, various different things, and then some sort of chunky, chunky glitters too. And of course, I've got the Sizzix glitters here. Then this one is kind of embellishments. I've got some Tim Holtz bits and bobs uh, that I use quite a lot in that big tub. Then I've got enamel dots and sort of diamond dots and things like that. Um, I've got some different shapes there. This one's all floral uh, stamens. And then I've got some different flowers. At the back, I've got some loose beads and things. And I've got crazy things like dominoes and tags. Just um, things that I might want to use for, for sort of more mixed media products, projects. And then these are for florals. These are floral wire and... Um, got some floral tape there as well to go with those this drawer is I've got well a bit of a mixture I've got some old book pages here I've got some chipboard in different colors I've got gray and um, the sort of brown chipboard and then I've got a lot of um, bubble up sheets if you haven't um, seen bubble ups, it's a craft board. It's kind of the best way to describe it is like a plasticky chipboard. Um, but it's good if you're using mixed media things because it doesn't get soggy like chipboard might do if you put lots and lots of paint on it. So that's that drawer. And then the bottom one, this is a watercolour card. And then I've got some rice paper 
and some old doilies and things that I don't really use very much. But yeah, this is all watercolour card. These loose sheets are where I've cut them from a bigger pad. And then underneath I've just got various different pads. So that's that drawer. Then we'll, we've just got three more to go and then the cupboard at the end. So moving on, this drawer unit on the top, again, I've got um, embossing powders. I've got um, a fine white and, and normal white, brown and clear. Then in this drawer, these are really old supplies, actually. These are the old brass stencils um, that you used for dry embossing with a light box. Um, when I first started crafting, that was I, I really loved those and um, they are lovely designs. So this drawer is kind of stuff I don't really use much and there's all the tools to go with it. Next, these are all my stencils. Again, there's a real mixture of brands in here. Um, I could probably do with organising these a bit better because um, they are all just kind of thrown in. But um, because they're all different sizes, I haven't really found a good solution for them. Then in this drawer is foils and stickers. So I've got all my different um, hot foiling, different brands here. And at the back here, there's a lot of stickers and, and bits and bobs, postcards and things. And then lastly, this bottom drawer is embossing folders. These are all Sizzix. Um, and then this back one has got some Sizzix. And then the rest of it is a mixture of different brands. And then underneath, you can just see peeking at the back, I've got a couple of A4 embossing folders. I only have a couple of A4, so they, they just fit underneath. And then moving on, we're nearly at the end. This top drawer is washi tapes and different adhesives um, and the glue for my um, hot glue gum and painter's tape and stuff. Next is other sorts of adhesive. I've got my post-it note tape. I've got some spray, different glues, more adhesives in this one. In here, I've got my red line tape, my normal double-sided tape. There's more double-sided tape at the back and some post-it notes. And then these are all my um, foam squares. This drawer was supposed to just be pencils and things, but I've ended up um, putting in these folders where I've got my shrink plastic, my stencil film, masking paper and some adhesive sheets. And then underneath all of that, I've got some coloured pencils. Let me move those out of the way. I've got my gelatos um, and then different different uh, types of pencils, really. I've got all my Prima watercolour pencils there. And at the back, this is all pretty much uh, calligraphy stuff. So that's that drawer. And then the last one here. These are all punches. I don't really use these very often, but I do sometimes use these stamping up ones. They're still quite useful, especially the circles if I'm doing swatches and things. So that's those. And then this last or, or first sort of um, of the draw units. This one's all a bit of a mixture, really. In the top, I've got batteries, some all my acrylic blocks. Um, spare blades for my craft knife that kind of thing so a bit of a bit of a mixture really this overflowing one is all my embossing powders and i have recently had a bit of a cull and cleared them out but um i can't bring myself to get rid of all of them because you never know when you're going to need a color do you so that's my embossing powders this one has got my a uh, jelly plate, I've got a crocodile, there's a light box at the back there, my daubers, um, all my ink blending type things and some brayers. So again, that draws a bit of a mixture, but and again, this one is another mixture. <laughs> um, I've got all my iron on adhesive here, my Sizzix um, shrink plastic tools. I've got a spare heat tool. I've got my iron, my pom-pom makers. So kind of a bit of a general. I've got an envelope maker there, different mats. So 
these drawers are all a bit of a mixture and then this one is all my cables my microphone for when i'm doing um videos and stuff and finally you'll be pleased to know we're just about at the end this last cupboard um again is a bit of a mixture i've got spare light bulbs when i need to change the bulbs in here i've got all my waxes for my um, wax burner so that i can keep it smelling nice and then those boxes are all spares um of the sizzix the lovely surfaces so the texture rolls so i've got um i get through those at quite a rate so i've got a few spares there and at the bottom sorry my fingers getting in the way at the bottom i've got some sort of spare storage tubs adhesive roll um and some mat board so hopefully that's given you a good look at all the contents of all those drawers. Don't forget this is one of a series. So if you want to look at other areas of the room, check out all my other videos on YouTube and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.